Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D. So I've been using the Galaxy S7 Edge as my daily driver for a little bit over a week and wanted to share some thoughts with you about what I really loved about the phone and other things that I didn't like as much. So first, I really like the design and build. There's a slight curve on the back. It's easier to hold than last year's Galaxy devices. Visually, the difference is subtle, but when you hold it, it's noticeably more comfortable. The camera bump has been flattened a bit. It's still not flush and the hump last year wasn't ever a big issue for me, but this is nicer. It has Gorilla Glass 5, which is supposedly better than Gorilla Glass 4, but I scratched my screen on the third day, and I don't even know how I did it. At first, I thought it was keys in my pocket, but I tested it, it wasn't the keys. It might have been like a piece of sand or something, but whatever it was, the screen can still be scratched. So protect it if you care about scratches. The same thing goes for the back. It'll scratch if you're not careful, and it's slippery, so get a skin for it. This one's from Dbrand, I'll link it in the description. So they have SD cards again, and I've really missed this feature, but not only is there SD support, but unlike what they originally said in their press release, you can totally install apps on the card. You can just transfer it over. If you remove the card, the apps installed on the card just get grayed out. The rear camera is a beast. It's 12 megapixel. I've shot a lot of photos on this thing over the past week, and I think it shoots a little better than the iPhone 6S and the Nexus 6P. So it's faster to focus, equally good in bright light, and much better in low light. The photos look great, and I think this really deserves the camera crown right now. But if you're wondering whether or not it's worth upgrading from a 2015 flagship to the S7 for just the camera, like unless you're shooting a ton of low light photos, probably not because the 2015 camera kings are still pretty close. It has a five and a half inch quad HD AMOLED panel and Samsung phones often have the best displays. They have the best contrast, the best viewing angles, energy efficiency, they're brighter and more visible in sunlight and even like the best color accuracy. So the default setting again is crazy oversaturated to make it pop out in stores. But if you put it on basic mode, the color accuracy is bang on. The always on feature is also pretty cool. It just puts the time or the calendar up on the screen when the device is sleeping and it doesn't seem to drain batteries very much. I found the dual edge display on the S6 Edge a little gimmicky, and on the S7 Edge, there's more customization, but I still don't find it super useful. It is really cool looking though. It's IP68 dust and water resistant, and having a water resistant phone is nice. It's not a big deal, but it's one less thing you need to worry about if you're ever in the rain, or if you drop your phone in the toilet. Like we've all done that, right? Okay, yeah, me neither. The S7 comes in two processor variants. So the one I'm running here is the Snapdragon 820, four gigs of RAM and it's supposedly vapor cooled. It's very fast, but when you compare it to other flagship devices right now, it's not a huge jump in speed. So obviously the 820 is gonna benchmark faster than an 810. And if I'm trying to find a difference between them, yeah, the S7 is a little bit faster, but when I'm using it in my day to day, all three of these devices feel super fast. Now, thermally, the S7 does way better than the Nexus 6P. The 6P always ran a little hot and it throttled down because of it, but the S7 stays as cool as the iPhone 6S. It's a really fast processor with excellent thermals. It's got a beefy 3600 milliamp hour battery and with very heavy use, I was comfortably lasting a full day with around four and a half hours of screen on time. It's a nice change over the S6 devices. With more normal use, the battery lasted a day and a half with screen on time closer to six hours. It still uses micro USB. I kind of wish Samsung used the S7 to speed up USB-C adoption around the world, but micro USB is still cool. The phone also supports fast adaptive charging and of course it has wireless charging. Okay, onto a couple things that I don't like. First, the speaker. So just to be clear, this is the loudspeaker, not the earpiece. It's on the bottom again, and it's not a great position. It's like the iPhone, where you need to cup it to hear stuff better, and it's a single speaker, so you lose that immersion when you're playing games or you're watching videos. Now, a lot of people won't notice or even care about speaker quality, but I consume a good chunk of my media on my phone, and compared to the Nexus 6P, the audio output here is really tame. And lastly, the thing that I dislike the most about the phone is TouchWiz. I like my stuff clean, so I'm a stock OS kind of guy. I love stock Android, I love stock iOS, but TouchWiz comes with a ton of features that are completely useless to me. And I know I can root it or run launchers to hide TouchWiz, like I'm running a material theme that kind of masks it, and I'm using dBloater to turn a bunch of things off, but these apps are still eating up storage, and it just kills me that I'm carrying around dozens of apps and features that I'll never use and I can't uninstall. But that's just me. One nice thing is that the RAM management is much improved. The S6 would aggressively close apps when they weren't in use, but this time around, I don't really notice it. Okay, the Samsung S7 Edge. Fantastic material choices and build quality, a very premium phone. 
Awesome looking screen covered in Gorilla Glass 5, but it can still scratch. The rear facing camera is arguably the best on smartphones right now. Inside we're rocking 32 gigs of storage that's expandable with micro SD. It's got a super fast Snapdragon 820 with four gigs of RAM, a big 3600 milliamp hour battery that'll easily last you a day or more, all of this in a water resistant package. Okay, so the phone is awesome. And aside from TouchWiz and the speaker, I would consider it nearly perfect for everything I'm looking for in a smartphone. But here's the thing, tons of people use TouchWiz and love it. And I'm a firm believer that if you use something for long enough, you can learn to appreciate it and like it as well. So because the hardware is as good as it is, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna force myself to use TouchWiz and see if I can get on board this train. That's the end of this video. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.